Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. Blog Talk Radio. Hey, folks, how you doing? I know it's been a little while, and you know, but we're here, and we're here with the Danny Tisdale Show because I'm Danny Tisdale, and I'm here to talk about all things that are fabulous, incredible, and wonderful in Harlem. And today it's going to be all about books because, yeah, you know, it's unofficial, but we can say it's official that we're in book season in Harlem. Uh, and it started, you know, back in June. But uh, you know, we'll get into that more because we're supposed we're, we're going to speak to the diva of books, uh, Eartha Watts Hicks, who's here uh, to talk just about that. And give me a few seconds before we get into the mix because we just want to let you know that you can also check us out at HarlemWorldMagazine.com or HarlemWorldMag.com. Uh, also, don't forget Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and all those places by either just putting in Harlem World Magazine or putting in HWMag, hashtag it, add it, and find it. But, uh, I, you know, more than anything, I'm glad to uh, have you with us, grab some tea, a little water, and uh, maybe a biscuit or cookie or two and listen to the conversation and uh, you can hit us up with emails uh, or uh, as I gave you our social networking info, hit us up there. So uh, without further ado, let's talk to our great guest. Uh, it's Eartha Watts Hicks. She's a writer, author of Love Changes, and she's got a new book coming out. She's editor-in-chief, of course, of Harlem World Magazine and a member of the Harlem Writers Guild. Uh, she's also a winner of the 2016, 2015-2016 uh, Game Changers Award by way of uh, um, the NAACP. She'll check me if I've got that wrong. And she's also won numerous awards from Project Enterprise and others. And how are you doing, Eartha? I'm great, Danny. I'm great. How's everything? I'm doing good. I've got my little water over here. It's uh, a little overcast outside, and I know that in our wonderful city of New York, especially Harlem, it's 82 degrees. So you know, I, I'm not complaining. Worse could be better. Okay. <laughs> so I, you know, of course, we want to talk about all the things that's going on with books, around books. Uh, in and around Harlem, and we know you're the book diva. So what's going on, Earth? I know that um, uh, 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 James Blake has a new book, so that that's my kind of, you know, entree to the conversation. What, what's going on on your end when it comes to uh, – I know you have a new book, but uh, are you reading any books out there that we yeah. don't know about? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, right now I'm reading Tree by Manette Coleman, who's also a member of the Harlem Writers Guild. And okay. it is historical fiction, um, the way she knows Tree. how to do it. Tree. Mm-hmm. T-R-E-E? -E. Yes. T-R-E-E. -E. Okay. And um, it's, uh, it's actually a really good book, a really good read, historical fiction. Um, basically taking place in and around the concept of the Underground Railroad, Railroad, and, okay. And it's um, it's a very very um well crafted, so I'm enjoying that you know even though it it takes it takes us back into that history that was difficult to to reminisce on. Right. But right, it's right. um, she she is, is that a, a new book writer. or is that uh, uh is that a book for 2017 or is that from last year? Yes, yeah, she 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 just released it like a, a about a month ago. Is that? Oh, nice. So we got to post that on the site. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's called actually The Tree, A Journey to Freedom is the exact title, and it's on Amazon right now. The actual release nice. date was May 23rd. So uh, nice, I'm reading nice, her, nice. her book. I just finished reading Kevin Hart's book, and um, it is phenomenal. The comedian. Yes. Okay. Yes, it, it's phenomenal, and it it wasn't what I expected. He actually, it's um, it's a biography or autobiography, and he's actually digging into his own story to show how it led to his success, even all of those difficult experiences. 
So he mm. um he's he's honest and it's funny, but it it shows that, you know, like so many of us he's been through some stuff. So um that was an enjoyable read. Um <laughs> I like that. He's he's been through some stuff. Oh yeah, he's been through some stuff and he just laid it out there in his book and it it it's 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 life. It's you know, it's funny and it's fun, but then there's that stuff that's not so fun. But he he put right. it together very well. Um, well, you know that's that's what I like about uh, uh, at least a lot of good art and a lot of good books uh, and just uh, good content in general, whether it's an individual or a group. You know, it has this foundation of you know their real life experience, and then they've been able. You know the genius of it is that they they are able to turn it into something that entertains us. You know, yeah, um, yeah. both real and and insightful. It's right. great stuff. Um, like it really is. Like I just also recently read um, a poetry book called War Cries, and that's by um, Nicole Goodwin. War Cries. Uh-huh. War Cries, and um, she is ex-military and female, and being. Um, a, a woman in the midst of war, it's it, it, it can tear it can tear a person apart. So right. reading her her book of poetry, it's it's amazing how she put the horrors of war in po- in poetic form, and actually make the words beautiful. So um, that's yeah. a, a a great read. It's a difficult read, but it is so well crafted that it's beautiful. Um, and that's War Cries, which is a, a poetry chat book by N- Nicole Goodwin. N- Nicole Goodwin, yeah. Yes, she's uh, she's so actually it, from it, Harlem. Yeah, I, I the the name is f- familiar. Is she part of the, the guild? No, no, she's not part of the um oh, okay. the, the guild. Oh, right. She was guild. also yeah. right. No, she was part of the um the programming for the UN General Assembly a couple of years back. She was a featured poet then. And she's mm. from Harlem, and um, she definitely put it, did her thing with that book. Um, um, also, nice. there's, there's quite a few others. Ter- oh, Terry McMillan has "I Almost Forgot About You," and um, that one is uh, it's it's classic Terry McMillan. Uh, a difficult arrangement, you know, of characters and scenarios, but it has um, her her writing genius is just there. And it's um, it, it was it surprised me a bit, but I I thoroughly enjoyed it. As with you know, as with anything, you're just you know immersed into the story. Whenever she writes anything, you're in the story. So, you know, I I, I love that one too. And um, so when oh. when you say Eartha that you know her, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead because I don't want you to to miss your points. Oh, I was gonna also mention um, the Book of Harlem by Bernice Bernice McFadden, who's um, out of New York, Brooklyn. And um, that's another historical book. So, you know, they, we've Brooklyn. had a lot of... We, we don't talk about anybody that's not from Harlem. She's from Brooklyn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> was, she's been banned we, we were, we... from Brooklyn. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me leave these folks alone. <laughs> so is that pretty typical, though, uh, uh, on the serious side of kind of the... Is, is this a month long of reading for you, or you know it's like two months and it's just more intense now than usual? Or is that pretty typical for you as a book enthusiast, writer, author? Well, as a book enthusiast, whatever um, catches my eye, I, I make a, a mental note if I don't, you know, pick it up on the spot. And with eBooks, it makes it so much easier to just keep everything hmm. in one central location. You know, I have a Kindle Fire, so, you know, whatever makes it into my Kindle Fire is walking with me, you know, so it's... Um, oh, I see. So it's not, yeah, like yeah. You're, it's not like the old days, you're walking around with a, a, a tote bag of books and then you sit down, you know, stack your books on the Starbucks table uh, and start reading. <laughs> it's not that kind of party. Well, it it really is still kind of kind of that kind of party. I still carry, you know, my my paperbacks, but it's okay. a lot easier to just have because paperbacks is like the more you add, the the big, the heavier the bag. So yeah, that bag, right? Yeah, you know, so that Kindle makes it a, a, just a little bit easier to just walk around with a thousand books with you. <laughs> so you're a a, a book influencer. Um, 
and people want to, you know, get material in front of you. For those authors out there that are listening in, uh, um, excuse me, uh, uh, um, book publishers who want to get books in front of you, how, how, what's the best way for someone like that, or just, uh, as I said, an author, what's the best thing to do? Uh, is it to get on these lists and, and have their books uh, on the list so that they can get in front of someone like you? What's what's the best way to approach something like that? Well, um, the, the best way to approach me about a book is to send me uh, an email on um, to earthatone at gmail.com or, or message me on, on Facebook. But what happens okay. with the Facebook mess- messaging is people friend you, don't even introduce them, themselves and stick, and stick a link in your, your inbox. And, and figure you'll uh, open it and, and <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, so that's, you know, um, like, like me, when I submit to anything, I do a formal sub- letter of submission with, you know, um, some information and a link on, you know, what I do and how I do it. I don't just, you know, drop a package or a proper an introduction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I, I so, hear you. I, I was just curious because I, I know how many uh, folks are out there with you know books, uh, f- you know in Harlem, outside of Harlem, next door to Harlem, and they, you know, want to get some love. And uh, I, I just thought I'd ask that question for them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes yeah. I just go to different book events, and and it's a matter of somebody just handing me a card with their information on it, with their book title. Mm-hmm. Um, um, actually, out at the um, Black Pack party, a young lady gave me her card. Her book was really good too. It was called um, "The Thirty Year Diet," which isn't so much uh, good title. Uh, great title, it, it, wonderful title, it, and it's not so much um, a diet plan, but how um, more or less how dieting can kind of take over our, our everyday right. everything, you know, and being right. always in our foremost, more, foremost thoughts. So. Her book, that's Robin Lupton, I believe, and it's called The 30-Year Diet. And it 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 puts you in the mind of, or a place where you realize, you know, just enjoy being in the moment instead of just focusing on those things that now get us. Right. I got to okay. watch what I eat. I, got, I can't do this. Just live it. And hopefully those things become a part of your life and you don't have to uh feel like you're carrying around the weight of the well a play on words the, the weight of the world um mm-hmm. as you try to live your life at the same time sounds like an interesting book um, yeah, it really is. but yeah. I, you know it's time it's already we're almost at the halfway point and i wanted to ask you before we get to that uh mid podcast station id uh what events have our readers missed already that has to do with books? And I know some of them uh, started in May and some of them in June because this book period runs until, what, something like uh, uh, the end of August, Eartha, or yeah. even book events? Yeah. And, okay. So, so, so what have they missed already? Well, May there was Book Expo America, which was at the Javits Center, and then we had our Harlem World Talks event at Image Nation Raw Space, which was phenomenal. And um, that that panel was consisted of um, Troy Johnson, Ron Kavanaugh, and Clarence Reynolds from the Center for Black Literature. And nice. between the three of them, they, they have the history of, of black publishing down, just between the three of them and their different experiences. Mm. So that was mm. a phenomenal event. And then it was the Black Pack Party that's usually in conjunction with Book Expo America, and that was on the 31st. So um, so May was pretty, 31st pretty of much. 31st May, right. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that, those were the events so far, and then um, – here, so here then we get a little up. break in June. Mm, a little break in June. And, and then we, we it kicks in again in July. And I'm going to take a quick station ID, Eartha, and then we can talk about what's happening and what's coming up, what's hot okay. in July when it comes to books. And I just want to let everybody know who's listening, no matter where you're listening, whether it's in Paris or Harlem or uh Los Angeles, wherever it may be, Ontario, Canada. I'm just talking about the places that we know. Uh, we have mm-hmm. listeners. Uh, you're listening to Harlem World Radio, and it's the Danny Tisdale Show. And I am Danny Tisdale, and 
you are listening to uh, uh, the book Diva of Harlem, which is Eartha Watts Hicks. She's also an author of Love Changes. And just between you and me, the listener, she's got a new book that I'm going to try and twist her arm to talk about. So back to Eartha. Eartha, yes. question. So <laughs> mm-hmm. what's, what's, um, what are these hot events? You, you heard me. I'm going to come back to you, though, about your new book. So, uh, But in the meantime, I wanted to ask you about books and, uh, uh, book events in July. What's, what's going on in Harlem? Uh, in, in July, we have the Harlem Book Fair, which is uh, along yeah. 135th Street, which stretches, um, stretches from Lenox Avenue all the way across. And there are panel events going back and forth across from the Schomburg Library to nice. the um, main stage. So that's, huge that's like event. a huge event, and it's one of the highlights of, of my book season. And, um, you know, so I'm looking forward to that. That's July 15th. And um, So that's, that's l- just July 15th. I'm, I'm going to use what you just mentioned as a plug for something mm-hmm. that we're partnering with, and that's the Harlem Whiskey Festival, which is July 11th and July 12th at uh, Cecil's and Minton's. And I think that's a perfect way to kind of prepare yourself for the Harlem Book Fair. If you have a little, uh, you're, you're sitting down, you have the whiskey, you're, you know, kind of looking over the books you're thinking of buying and then going to the uh, book fair a little later on, a few days later, I think that's perfect. Remember, you got to drink responsibly, but this should be a great event. So sorry to yes. cut you off. You were talking about the um, the book fair. Yes. Um, then uh, later during uh, that same day, which is the Saturday, at um, Calabar Imports, which is on 134th Street, and Frederick Douglass, we have uh, a talk event where we're featuring um, po- poets and writers in a, a, a feature discussion on um, some of our books and titles that we have available, and that's from 5 to 7 p.m. So I thought that was going to be uh, – I, I remember one time you were talking about that doing being a, a reading. Yes, it's a, it's a reading and discussion or, you know, a, a feature featured, featuring four, four writers and poets. Okay, so that's, uh, when is that? That is July 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. And where is her uh, Calabar? Calabar Imports is located on 134th Street in Frederick Douglass, right on the corner. And I believe the building number is 2504. And it's a beautiful space. Okay, and we'll we'll, um, um, post that on the site so people can check it out and so they don't miss a beat and... Uh, be able to participate in all that good stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, you were you're running down July. That's, that was the 15th. Oh. Yes, that was the 15th. And then um, shortly thereafter comes um, Harlem Harlem Week. So it's right, um, right around right the corner, and that's with two E's, not a A. I just <laughs> folks that have never heard about it, you know, because Harlem's <laughs> always strong. I don't want folks to think that you know. All right, all right, I get off of that. So that's that is right around the corner because that Harlem Week runs for a whole month. Yes, yes, it actually does run for a whole month, and it, it, there are events just all all over. So uh, Harlem Week is in August, and then in September we have um, Book Expo America. No, sorry, September is the Brooklyn Book Festival, which is the third Saturday. Okay. And um and, and from what I understand is also another book expo, um, a New York book expo along the same month, shortly like right after, on the twenty second and the twenty third, and I'm waiting for more information wow. on that one. Yeah. Busy, busy, and, uh, busy. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, uh Harlem World will have another Harlem World Talks event on the thirtieth and I uh, I'm looking to invite in a very special guest. So we're we're That's, gonna uh, September thirtieth, you know, right? September 30th, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, a special guest. I guess that means you're not sharing who that special guest is. Don't don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> but I take it you're not sharing who that special guest might be. It's a special surprise you're not. guest. <laughs> okay. I can't do an audio twist your arm or anything like that to get you to say who that might be. Well, I, I hear you. you, you to, it, until they, I guess, Give them the thumbs up and the email thumbs up. You can't say anything, so I understand that. Right. 
so in theory, this could that event could be the last book event, uh, 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 quote unquote, of the year in Harlem. Well, I mean, well, not well, not exactly, because there's there's um, always um, Circle of Sisters, which is October. Oh, that's so right. It's that's like right. The, and then towards the end of the year, you have the libraries doing their holiday festivals, holiday book fairs. The Langston Hughes does um, the second Saturday at the Langston Hughes book fair. So. No, the second so here I am is just thinking about and Harlem then, World, and like that's the only world out there, and uh, that would end the whole book season. No, Tisdale, it doesn't work that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we end the book season. Harlem World, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I'm just messing around. Um, <laughs> so uh, that that makes a lot of sense, and that might be <clears throat> something we might want to think about too, because of course you you going to have book season, well, not book season, but book events towards the end of uh, the season itself, because uh, uh, it should start heating up right after, what, September with uh, uh, either book releases for the holidays and all that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. No, we we usually have a, a few holiday books that are released right around September. So, September, um, right. Yeah, but more oh, yeah, or less so it's really... Just, yeah, but but really, book season for some reason seems to fall from like May to October. You know, the bulk of it. There's the holiday right, stuff right. and the holiday book things that we do, but it's it's generally from May May to um, October. So you know? I, I, I you you talked about the uh, uh, you know tech ways that you find out about books. Uh, what about you know physical? Uh, spaces and places in Harlem uh, where you go for books. And I know it's a challenge these days because, uh, you know, books finding a home in the physical space is, you know, real mm-hmm. hard. I mean, we've seen what happened with Barnes & Noble. Uh, where are some of the physical places that you go for to find out about books in Harlem? Oh, that's um, Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center, which is located on the corner of 156 right, in right. Amsterdam. Um, so um, Jennifer and her team, they've been holding down books in Harlem for quite a while now, and they've weathered many storms. So uh, I love that place, and it's um, Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center. And then we also mm-hmm. have um, a new, a newer bookstore in Harlem now, and that's Revolution Bookstore, which is somewhere around 131st oh, yeah. Street and Lenox Avenue. And right. um, their books are more... Um, it's cultural as well as political. So they have titles from um, a, a, a bevy of aud- uh, audiences who, or be- of authors who are all about government empowerment, um, mm-hmm. um, rallying and support, and, and being political and just networking and, and trying to fight against the, the systematic oppressions wherever they may be. And and it's reflective of all of us who feel disenfranchised. So that's that's their theme and their goal, just, you know, the battle cry. And um, also there's Calabar Imports. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a space that that has an eclectic collection of just items from around the world, but she does have a, a rather a rather large book collection of titles that are available for sale as well. And um, also, too, on the corner of 125th Street, I believe somewhere around the Magic Johnson Theater, but right on the strip, right on 125th, there is um, is CD and his um, book table. So he has a, a table out there, and he has, like, over 100 titles. So um, He's been out there yeah. for quite a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's been out there a while. You know, he's yeah. also an, an author himself as well as a publisher himself. So, um, you know, and then you know, aside from that, it's it's, uh, yeah, yeah, and and sometimes it's it's not him. It's sometimes it's him himself, you know, and then sometimes he has like other members of his team out there. You know, he's um he's the author of Fat Two F A T O U, and his name is C D and Tamika. He's a a book called Tamika, and it's C um, S I D I. Is his, is his name, but he's an author, he's a publisher, and he's a, a book vendor that has, um, you know, a, a nice, you know, spread of inventory. 
You're right. You're right. No, I've uh, I've checked him out there because he's right in front of the Magic Johnson Theater, correct? Mm-hmm. Right in front of the Magic Johnson or, Theater. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. and he's he's very um resourceful. He's very resourceful. Um, very friendly, and you know, have a conversation with him about you know books or whatever. He's he's uh he's he's want to hold a conversation with you know, but um yeah. We should do an interview with him one day. That could be uh, right. quite. Interesting, because I'm sure he could um, enlighten us with so much information uh, yeah. about books and and and, and other uh, good info. And I I, I do like the the uh, your other mention of the uh, uh, Revolution books because uh, Harlem has a deep history of uh, revolution of sorts, and then to have a, a, a book space like that in Harlem right here. Uh, you know, steps away from our doorsteps is is a really good thing. And Earth, we're down to our our, our last five minutes, and and with those five minutes, um, I of course want you to talk a little bit about your new book. Can you give us a, a quick insight into that? Because I also want to ask you about you know some of the links where people can keep in contact with you, and of course your favorite place in Harlem. So, what about your your new book? Okay, um, my new book is Graffiti Mural, which is a collection of poetry, short stories, and personal essays, and um, some of the pieces I actually perform. So this is a great read. It's available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and um, you pick it up, grab a copy. So when you say that you perform, what do you what do you mean? Um... Uh, is that going to be an audio piece that is more performance, or is there going to be some video connected to it? What do you, what do you mean by perform? Oh, I, I actually uh, am working on an audio piece in connection with the Graffiti Mural okay. um, paperback, and that's a work in progress. It's called the um, Audio Project, actually. But I actually do spoken word, um, spoken word poetry at certain venues throughout the city. So are you going to do some of that? Can you give us uh, uh, some insight, even though I didn't hear you talk about it, in that event that's going to be at Calabar? Are you going to uh, yes. do a little bit of your – oh, okay, good, good, good. Yes. Um, at the event on Cal- at Calabar, I will definitely be doing some pieces from Graffiti Mural. On July 15th? Um, July 15th. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure here, because I know we're probably down to our last two minutes uh, and uh, what are some of the links if people want to get in contact with you about your book and uh, books and writing and all that good stuff? Okay, my um, website is um, www.earthatone.com. Also, um, in your browser, you can put simply the words author, A U T H O R dot two, and that's spelled T O forward slash Earthatone like Earth Tone, but it's Eartha Tone because my name is Eartha. And that should take mm-hmm. you to a link right on Amazon. It has like five or six of my titles. And oh, I'm on nice, Facebook nice, and Twitter nice. at Eartha Tone and Instagram at Eartha Tone. Yeah, and folks, you know if you are looking for books, you're going to run into uh, Eartha Watts Hicks. And, uh, and of course, that's a good thing. Um, before we, we, of course, disconnect, Eartha, I want to ask you, what is your favorite place in Harlem? Um, right now, my favorite pl- place in Harlem is the um, Schomburg Library. And uh-huh. they have everything that's right there. One. They even have a, a, book, a bookstore in the library. So the Schomburg right. Library is my favorite. But b- between the cultural events that they hold in the auditorium to where my guild meets to the bookstore is right. one of my favorite places, the Schomburg. And, um, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. and that's a, that's a good thing because it's free. Uh, you can improve your intellect. Uh, along with other folks who are the same way, and it's pretty much in the central Harlem, so you you can't lose with that. Uh, and that's a that's a, a a great favorite. And Earth, we want to thank you for being on the show and uh, giving us all this great, great, great information uh, about books in Harlem, the people that are connected to those. Uh, events and especially to your uh, new book. And what's the title of your, your new book again? Graffiti Mural. Graffiti Mural, and we will uh, post something, of course, on the site 
so that folks can uh, check it out, uh, buy out all your inventory, and, um, you know, continue to support uh, the great work that you do. And, again, Eartha, thank you for being on the show, and you know I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, folks, you have listened to the Danny Tisdale Show, and I'm Danny Tisdale. Check us out next time uh, when we have our next show. Talk to you soon. See you soon. Listen up. Peace. Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet fish sandwich. Uh Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal.